In this section, we are going to focus on higher order constructs, hierarchical component models, and specifically, the focus will be on reflective formative model. We will use the disjoint two stage approach to test a reflective formative model. Now, a reflective formative higher order construct, this is type 2 of reflective formative model or type 2 higher order construct. Now, if you could see, these are three lower order constructs and this is one higher order construct. The lower order constructs are reflective whereas the higher order construct is formative. So reflective, formative. These three lower order constructs form the higher order construct. Now we are going to use a two stage approach to test the reflective formative model. Now, researchers have proposed the two-stage approach as an alternative to repeated indicators approach. In fact, a research has proposed two versions of this two-stage approach. One being embedded two-stage approach and the other is disjoint two-stage approach. This one is used in majority of the cases. And the focus of today's video is on disjoint two-stage approach. Now, for example, while the embedded approach which we might do in a video later, the embedded approach models, the entire higher order construct in its first stage, the disjoint approach initially draws on the lower order components. Hence the denominations embedded or disjoint. Now in the embedded approach, the higher order construct is present in its first stage of or the entire higher order construct is in the model in its first stage. Whereas in disjoint two stage approach, in the first stage only lower order components are present that make up or form the higher order construct in the second stage. That's why the name is given embedded and disjoint. As both versions of the two stage approach lead to similar results, you can see this paper by uh, Chia in 2019. There is no compelling reason for preferring one over other. However, majority of the papers using reflective formative have used the disjoint two-stage approach. The disjoint two-stage approach. So what is disjoint two-stage approach? The disjoint two-stage approach differs from the embedded two-stage approach in the specification of both the stages. Rather than using the repeated indicators approach in stage one, the disjoint two-stage approach considers only the lower order components of the higher order construct. Now instead of using both the lower order constructs and forming the higher order construct in the first stage that is called the embedded stage, in the disjoint two-stage approach, we first focus on lower order construct and get the latent variable scores for the lower order constructs and in stage 2 we utilize that lower or sorry latent variable scores to form the higher order constructs to execute the disjoint two stage approach researchers then need to save the construct scores as mentioned the latent variable scores but only for the lower order components and in stage 2 what we do is we use those latent variable scores to form the higher order constructs. We will be seeing that in an example shortly. Now apart from the validation of your lower order components, one needs to validate the higher order components as well. So when evaluating the higher order models, the same model evaluation criteria generally apply as for any PLS SCM analysis. However, higher order constructs need to consider two additional measurement models for which the evaluation criteria apply the measurement model of the lower order components and the measurement model of higher order construct as a whole represented by the relationship between higher order component and its lower order component. So rather than just validating and reporting the reliability and validity for lower order components in your study, you will have to validate the higher order construct as well. So the reflective formative higher order construct, the disjoint two stage approach. Now in, in stage 1, 
the estimation and measurement model assessment for the lower order components is based on standard model which draws direct relationship between the constructs. The higher order component is not included in the PLS model. Now this is the difference of the disjoint two stage approach with the embedded two stage approach. Then in stage two, the latent variable scores from stage one allow creating and estimating the model that is the higher order construct along with the other constructs in the study. Now the assessment of stage two results begin with so how do you assess the stage two? Higher order components formative measurement model the results support the conversion validity of the higher order construct when the path coefficient does not significantly differ from 0.7. So your outer weights are significant, your outer loadings are significant and your VREF values are okay. So apart from doing the lower order components that is reliability and validity from the lower order components, your second stage begins with validating your higher order components. Now you do not you have, will have to make sure that there are no collinearity issues, there are no outer loading issues and the weights are significant. And finally you test your structural model. Moving on. So how do you validate? This is a diagrammatic view if you want to have a bit more detail and understand validating formative indicators that is reflective formative model and in the stage 2 you will have to check the VIF values. If the VIF values are greater than 5, you will have to treat the collinearity issues. And if they are less than 5, then we do not have any issues. We have to go for analyzing the significance of outer weights. So apart from assessing the VIF values, the next step is we assess the outer weights, the significance of outer weights. So outer weight is significant. You continue with the interpretation of the outer weights and absolute and relative size. However, if outer weight is not significant, we will have to see the outer loadings. If the outer loading is greater than 5, then we keep the indicator, although it is not significant. However, if the outer loading is less than 0.5, then we test the significance of outer loadings. Now, moving on. The outer loading is less than 0.5, and is not significant. So what we do is we delete the formative indicator. However, if the outer loading is less than 0.5 but, there is, but, but the loading is significant, then you will have to see whether the removal will have a significant impact on your study. If so, you will keep it. Otherwise, you can delete it. So here is the reference that I have used for drafting this presentation. This is a very good paper if you want to understand the higher order constructs. Now let's see and let's do practically how do you do reflective and formative model. So here is a model that I want to test. I've got CSR as my second order higher order construct based on these four lower order constructs. Ti is first order and OP is also first order. So where is my starting point if I want to do a reflective a formative two-stage approach using disjoint two-stage approach testing a reflective formative model. So what's my first step? This is my first step. You will have to get all your lower order constructs together as first order. You see there is no second order, there is no CSR here. These were already first order so though no problem. But ECC, LC, EC, DC, they were first order to CSR. But there is no CSR now. So CSR is in this study a second order or higher order construct formed by ECC, LC, EC and DC. But since I'm using a disjoint two-stage approach to test my reflective formative model, I've removed CSR. So my first step, all lower order constructs. So once I've got all lower order construct, the first step is I go to calculate PLS algorithm. 
and as mentioned previously, I will assess the reliability and validity of my constructs. Path and that's it, I go to start calculation. And I check the outer loadings first. Well, most of them are fine. Yes, a few less than 0 0.60, but again, you will have to consider whether removing them will have a significant or substantial improve in the reliability and validity. So let's see the reliability and validity. Well, yes, you may need to remove one from DC and may you, you may need to remove one from TI as well. So which of the items can you remove? From DC, you can remove 0.596 and from TI, let's remove 0.580. So TI1 and DC2 can be removed. But for now, for, for, for this study, let's keep it. Just, just an example, but in, in, in any study, if you are getting insignificant or rather you are getting uh, low reliability and validity values, you can consider the removal of variables or sorry, indicators with low loadings. In this case, just for the sake of example, I'm going to keep it. Now, this is the first stage. Now, again, how do you report these results? So here is an example that I have done. So here is the chapter data analysis and results, the introduction. So you introduce your chapter. What are you going to do in the chapter? The next step, your hypothesis for the study. And the first step is your measurement model. So your measurement model starts with reporting your factor loadings. So how do you report your factor loadings? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an Excel file opened. And as I run the analysis, I'll show you how to report the results as well. So I'll copy it into Excel format and I'll put it here. Let's say I'll put it here and let's format it to three decimal points. Right click, format cells, number three. Okay, and for now, let's keep it and we'll copy it and I'll put it here as factor loadings. Right click on it, auto fit, auto fit to window, give it borders as we do in APA style. So top border, bottom border and the first row will have a bottom border as well. Let's centralize the columns apart from the first column. So now you have reported your factor loadings. And moving on, the next step is your indicator multicollinearity. So your VIF values. Where are your VIF values? Here are VIF values, all of them less than 5. A few blacks here but still less than five so let's copy it to excel format you cannot copy them directly into ms word they will be pasted in, in the form of text so you will have to use ms excel so we copy it and let's say paste it and let's arrange it formatting is really important make sure whenever you are presenting your results they are formatted in a proper manner otherwise your whole effort looks uh, in vain. Um, so structure and format of results is particularly important. Again, now VIF is done. The reliability analysis for lower order constructs. Remember what I'm doing is I'm only reporting the lower order constructs for now. So your reliability analysis for lower order constructs, construct reliability and validity, copy it. Although we've got VI, a, um, AVE issues, but for now, we are going to keep them because the objective of this exercise or this session is not sorting out reliability and validity issues, but understanding the higher order constructs. So we do not normally report row, so let's delete it. I'm just interested in, in reporting the reliability. So I'm just going to use this. Let's copy it. 
and paste it here right click auto fit to window and add a zero here to make it three decimal points all of them look good you can arrange it like give borders next construct validity now construct validity is established through convergent validity and discriminant validity so convergent validity how do you report convergent validity you report convergent validity through ave average variance extracted normally the recommended value is greater than 0 0.50 now in order to improve this value obviously in you could have deleted these two loadings or these two items with low loadings this would have improved the ave value but for now let's keep it so and now it's just convergent validity so we do not need the other columns and let's copy it and paste it here auto fit auto fit to window Control E. Now, in order to format this table, we are going to add the borders and after bottom and top border, bottom border for the first row. Next, once the AVEs are reported, we report discriminant validity. And discriminant validity is assessed using three different criteria Horner and Larker. So where is Forner and Larker criteria? Forner and Larker criterion is here. Discriminant validity, the first one. So this value here is the square root of AVE for DC and it's, it must be higher than all the values underneath. So I do not see any discriminant validity issues here. So we just copy into Excel format and paste it here we copy it and paste it remember for now till now we've been focusing on just the lower order constructs and reporting the lower order construct now once we are done with the lower order constructs we are going to focus on the higher order constructs so this is all done Now similarly you can report cross loadings and you can remote uh, the HTMT values you just have to copy the tables from here yeah, cross loading this one and HTMT this one all green so no issues. Now moving on to your model again assessing the higher order construct. So once you have reported the lower order constructs their reliability and validity the next step is what we do is we get the latent variable scores why do we need the latent variable scores because these scores for these lower order constructs will serve as indicators for the higher order construct they will form the higher order construct and you will see the same number of cases that you earlier had so we copy it into excel format and we open our data file so here is our data file and what we do is we paste the results right at the end actually I had already so let's assume okay let's assume there were no results so what we do is we paste them here we do not need the case ID and since it's a disjoint two stage approach we do not need the other lower order constructs as well so we can remove it we only need the lower order construct scores or latent variable scores for the lower order constructs of the higher order construct that is CSR and now we save this and we will import this file into our smart PLS right click import data file go to the folder data file for SPSS and press 
open. Let's name it data file for SPSS with latent variable scores, LVS. Press OK. And now you have imported the file. So there are no issues. Let's close this PLS algorithm. We do not need this. Now we do not need this first order as well. And you need, you see, there were no second orders. All lower order constructs linked with each other. So before you generate your latent variable scores, all lower order constructs linked with each other. Cross. Now this is the model that we want to test. The reflective formative model. Now CSR is formed using ECC, LC, EC and DC. But now we cannot use this score. Because ECC here is based on these four indicators. And CSR is actually based on all these indicators. Instead of using these indicators for CSR, we need to use ECC, LC, EC and DC as indicators. So where are these? Here they are. Here. So what we need to do is remove this, remove this, remove this, remove this, remove CSR. And now you add CSR based on the four dimensions DC, EC, ECC, LC. So you generated the LVS scores based on the first order or first stage. And in the second stage, you add these as indicators for CSR. So now this is your CSR. But there's one slight one issue here. You see, this is reflective. So we need to change it to formative. Now this is formative. In the first stage here, they were reflective. Now in the second stage, they are formative. So we've got the latent variable scores for all these dimensions. And now we are going to use these latent variable scores to form CSR. So this is your second stage. So now we need to connect this with this, connect this with this. So first thing is validating your higher order construct. So how do you validate this? Go to calculate, go to bootstrapping. Normally it's 5000 for now, just for the sake of the video, I'm going to keep it to 5500. Complete bootstrapping and then start. So the first thing is significance of outer weights. So whether our outer weights are significant? Well, one of them is slightly insignificant. But all three, the rest of them are significant. But what if this is insignificant? As we mentioned earlier during our presentation, that then you need to check the outer loadings. So let's go to the outer loadings just above the outer weights. Is this significant? Is it greater than 0.5? Yes, and it is significant. So we do not have any validity issues for higher order constructs. So your higher order construct CSR is valid in this study. So how do you report these results? How do you report validating higher order construct? So what you need to do is you need to have this table where you mention your higher order construct, which is CSR, your lower order constructs, which are DC, EC, ECC, LC, and you just copy the results from the tables here. Outer weight, T statistics, P value, outer loading, VIF. So where are outer weights and their T statistics? So go to outer weights. So here are these four rows that you can copy this original sample. That is your outer weight and your T statistic. You can have P value as well. Next step is outer loading. So what were the outer loadings? Here is the outer loading. 0 0.714, 0 0.723, 0 0.803 and 0.615. And finally, you need the VIF values. So where are the VIF values? It's not in here. So how do you get the VIF values? In order to get it, you go to calculate, PLS algorithm and press start calculation. And what you get is collinearity statistics. 
So here are the VIF values for the four subdimensions of CSR and all of them are less than five. So no VIF values. So there is no issue whatsoever based on the analysis with the validation of CSR, which is the higher order construct. Now, once you have validated the lower order constructs and once you have validated the higher order constructs, the next step is running your structural model. And that is very simple as we have already done previously. Just go to calculate, go to bootstrap and again 5000, but now for now, just start calculation. And I think it's what already there. Anyways, okay, yeah, it was already there. The results were already there. But anyways, so here you are path coefficients. So what relationships were you testing? You are testing the influence of impact of CSR on TI, TI on OP, CSR on OP, and the mediating role of TI. So here are your results. CSR and OP, the direct effect is significant. CSR and TI, the direct effect is significant. TI and OP, the direct effect is maybe significant at 10%. Mediation, specific indirect effect, you can say that there is some sort of mediation, but if you are very strict on 0 0.05, well, there is no mediation. So how do you report it? As we have mentioned in the videos earlier, you write your hypothesis here and then you just briefly describe your hypothesis and report your results. Just copy the results from the required table here. CSR on OP, this is how you can paste your results. 0.397, let's change it. 97, the T value is 3.902. 902 and the p value is less than 0 0.001 and your ones uh, hence your h1 was supported similarly you can do for h2 h3 and finally your mediation analysis you can do it for that as well just mention in the mediation analysis that it was performed to assess the mediating role of team identity the results revealed a partial mediating role of ti obviously the total effect was significant and with the inclusion of mediator, the direct effect was still significant. So you can say there is a sort of partial mediation if you take it at 10%. And then you report your mediation analysis like this in the table. So you mention your total effect of CSR and OP. You mention your direct effect of CSR and OP. And then you mention your specific indirect effect. Where is your specific indirect effect? Here is your specific indirect effect. And then finally, you can copy your model into your document as well here. So if you want to copy it, just go, to, go here, just go to file, copy to clipboard and you can paste it here like this. So this is how you can analyze reflective formative model where CSR was formative, second order formative, first order reflective. And you had lower order constructs as well, apart from CSR, that were just first order reflective. I hope the video would have helped you understand the concept of reflective formative models and how to analyze and report the reflective formative model. Thank you very much.